I am recording. I am recording. Hello. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Um, hello, sirs. Yeah, welcome to another podcast with Will and Nate. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about... Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Season one, episode three: Underage drinking, a national concern. Oh, it is a national concern. Hey, Nate. Yeah. Was this uh, directed by our good friend John Fortenberg? It was not. It was directed by some guy named Dan. You know, I was gonna say this one kind of sucks, and I thought that might be the reason why. Really? No. Oh. Of course not. Okay. Um, uh, I was going to ask you to yeah. like start off with like an ane- anecdote about underage drinking, but then I was like, oh yeah, I'm talking to Will Noon, so. Uh, hey, I have plenty of underage drinking stories or anecdotes. I mean, no, not really. But in high school, when my friends would have parties at their houses, I would just find an empty room and go to sleep on a couch. And then, yeah, otherwise, if there wasn't a party, we would just all meet at the Taco Bell and then walk in mass to the train tracks and drink. Everyone would drink by the train tracks, which seems like the safest pop. Yeah. I feel like drinking, underage drinking by the train tracks is like a, uh, a, a universal, universally accepted norm. I mean, it's the ideal place for <laughs> children that don't understand like the limits of alcohol consumption. You know, it's yeah. the safest place. Perfect. There are no cars, so you know. It's much safer. Yeah, and, you know, most of the time there's no trains. If you want to break it down. Yeah, statistically. Like most of the time there's no traffic. Yeah, like 90% of the time. Where can you get I'd that number? More than that. 98% of the time. Oh, yeah, I guess trains are pretty fast. Okay, so thanks, Dan, for directing the show. This episode. Um, so basically, this episode opens to the, like, a super packed. Patty's Pub, which I guess they haven't really established it that much, but it's a very rare occurrence. Um, af- you know, after season and after season after season, you realize that it, you know, it's almost always empty. But uh, this 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 far into the, it's a, anyway. But they all comment how great it is, how packed it is, how wonderful it is. Everyone's amazed. Everyone's in a great mood. They've never had this many people in the bar. What's going on? This is like the greatest night Patty's has ever seen. I know. Crowd, right? yeah. This combined with the first episode uh, is like the busiest Patty's has ever been. Right. I was like the f- season one might have the most the most patrons in the bar. Yeah, exactly. It's it's almost always empty, so it's weird that like you said, yeah, with Terrell promoting it. Well, I mean, basically, two out of three episodes, Patty's is the hottest bar in Philadelphia. One for yeah. for gay people and two for underage kids. Uh yeah, this uh this first scene has some good uh Charlie Day dancing. Oh my god. He gets excited and says he feels like dancing. Mm-hmm. Um and first he's got a nice handshake. He's just shaking his hand. And then it moves on to his body as he steps on the floor and does uh some really nice like back bending sort of uh, any clue what that move would be called? No, but it's really nice. Yeah. That's the thing that you always forget about actors is that often they're trained in multiple disciplines, you know, see some like generic actor person, and then all of a sudden they have, uh, like Shirley from Community. <laughs> Doesn't she have a ridiculous singing voice? Yes. Yeah, isn't it annoying? They're like typically more attractive than normal people. They can obviously act, then they can sing, they can dance. It's like, come on, people. Yeah. Well, I mean, their childhood probably was. A little bit different than ours. True. And I guess that's why they're on TV. Anyway, um, so yeah, Charlie's great. He's the best. He's dancing. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, that's when they uh they also you know, so Mac, Dennis, uh, and Charlie are over by the jukebox just appreciating how great everything is. How every how how like everyone's having a good time, the bar's packed, this is so great. And this is the first time in the episode that someone references uh they look over and see D at the bar, and they, someone, I think Max says, "Hey, I think that dude's gonna bang your sister." He's uh, yeah, he's talking about um, 
the character Trey. Oh, Trey. Trey is so cool. It's a great name for... I mean, I guess I don't know what high school is like anymore, but at the time, that was a very good, like, jock, popular guy name. Oh, yeah, it's a very cool name. Cool name for a cool dude. Oh, and <laughs> I think my favorite line from the scene is when, when Charlie does go out to, to the, onto the dance floor to start dancing and feeling it. Uh, Max says, I love that little man. So, yeah, so eventually their excitement kind of changes when... Dennis is like, yeah, pretty young crowd. And then I think Max, oh, yeah, what do you think? People in college? He's like, yeah, I don't know. Really young crowd. Um, and that's when this perfect a- actress walks by. Or act- Wait, do we call everyone actors now? Yeah, actor. Okay, sorry. Uh, when this perfect actor walks by and Dennis says, hey, you, how old are you? And she turns around. And she looks scared and pretty young, but then as soon as she starts talking, you see her braces. She's like, 21? Uh, and that's when he reacts, flips out, pulls the power cord from the uh, jukebox to kill the music, and then says, All right, everybody, everybody out! out! Title screen. Perfect cut to a title screen of, yes, underage drinking, a national concern. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing now that we're not, e- either one of us are. Neither of us are good uh, candidates to to talk about like fake IDs or anything because I definitely never did that. Because where I'm from, I don't there. I don't even know where the nearest bar would have been. <laughs> right. Wait. So, like, how did people drink in high school? There were a couple um, local guys that you could always count on. You uh, you know, give them twenty bucks. Gotcha. The it's, yeah. the equivalent of. The homeless guy that you buy 40s off of. Yeah, exactly. I mean, usually they're they're nice younger guys that, you know, maybe haven't left the the area to to go to college or right. do anything other than farm. But um yeah, and then like so you do that and then you basically just like go out into the country. Right. Because there's no no people around. So yeah, fake ID wasn't really a necessity for us. You you ride your Vespa out onto the range? I didn't ride the Vespa. I just thought it was cool I, that you had a Vespa on the farm. Yeah, it is very weird. Where did you get the Vespa? Um, I think my dad bought it from someone that lived in the town. So it like, made a little more sense, but still not very much sense to have a Vespa on like dirt roads. <laughs> right. There was one, there was one paved road in, in our town. Um, For I those guess of... That, that would be acceptable, and, and of course, like a highway, but in the actual town, there was one paved road. For those of you that don't know, Nate grew up in central, wait, no, is it western? Western, is western yeah, extreme West, western Kansas. West, western Kansas, which is uh, uncolloquially the middle of nowhere. Um, while both Figuratively being and literally. The middle of the country, the direct middle of the United States, <clears throat> but also... Um, I I went to visit his his folks on a cross country motorcycle trip, and I got to experience, uh, the lazy H. The lazy HV. Oh wait, sorry, the lazy HV. V as in Victor. Right. Um, but more importantly for me was visiting Mount Sunflower. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the highest point in Kansas at four thousand and thirty nine feet above sea level. Wow, it's crazy because I just I like rode my bike you know, my motorcycle up there and just like mm-hmm. hike the rest of the way. Uh, and yeah, I actually spent a very... the night on top of the peak. At the very peak, I, I pitched a tent, you know, because I, I was camping the whole time and it was mm-hmm. pretty windy up there, but I managed to yeah, survive. And I bet my parents were not were really trying to convince you to stay at the house. No, I think they, they got no? a kick out of it. I think they were excited. Okay. Yeah, I mean, anytime I talk to my parents, they ask me what Will Noon is up to. Great folk, you know. Can't, I can't, that can't be the only parents who ask what Will Newton is up to. Parents um, like me, he's a fascinating character. But um yeah, so what did what what did you do? You got out to the farm like during the day? Yeah, that was um so I, you know, I was coming off whatever 70 maybe, I don't know, whatever highway that is, and then it kind of cuts north and I went straight on this little road uh, you know, and then it got to like sort of the middle of nowhere and then I turned right on highway whatever, the dirt road. Mm-hmm. Um and then coming road so, three, road three. There you go. Um, so at that point, so I was on this 
DR650 that I bought in Austin and was riding. And uh, so I guess there are dips where it'll go down and, and it's kind of a wash, like a seasonal, I don't know if it's like every 10 years or every year it'll wash, it'll rain and wash out. Does it's like every sense? year, every second year. Um, it, it happened pretty regularly, like not, n- not every 10 years, you know, it was like, um, pretty regular. And then you, yeah, you, we couldn't go into town. Oh yeah. Cause I, I, I knew that it must happen. You know, you can tell that it's a wash or something. I don't know what you would refer to it as, but, um, well, there's the Smoky Hill river, which doesn't run anymore, but that's where that is. And when it, when it floods, that's what happens. The river runs. Right. So, but I guess I couldn't tell because it was dry at the time. Uh, how hot, you know, whether it was like a foot deep or like f- five feet deep, uh, you know, what did it get to when it was bad? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I haven't lived there for like uh, 20 years or something like that. But um, I think, you know, I think if it's, a, if, it, if it's above like a foot and a half, I would say you either need to be in a large vehicle. Like, I guess you could get through with a, a pickup truck. It's like a bigger pickup truck or right. you know, obviously like tractors and shit can go over that and go through that gotcha but i mean yeah it, it gets to the point where that that river runs and it's uh pretty pretty gnarly so yeah the reason why i was convinced that it wasn't just like rolling hills and it was actually the bottom of a wash or like the the bed of a dry river is that the dirt road became a sand road yeah, and, like, oh my god. And when yes. you're on a motorcycle and, and you're in a new area, and like, although a new area should have prompted me to go slower, but, you know, I was probably ripping down that highway. I was on a, an off-road bike, so I was like, ah, fuck it, this is a dirt road, I'm a, on a dirt bike, I'll go. I, yeah. I was probably doing 50 miles an hour, mm-hmm. and when I hit that sandy wash, I sort of started to get this, like, wobble, and yes. on a motorcycle... You know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, for people that don't, there's like this gyroscopic thing that can happen when you get a like a wobble or something that happens, and the the bars and the bike just start uh, like gyroscoping and wobbling, and it gets worse and worse, and you have to like it's kind get... of like fish tailing in 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 some senses, right? Yeah, I it, mean, I'm assuming people know what that is. Yeah, like if you're skidding and you like turn the wheel too much, and then it overcompensates, and that's like usually when people get into trouble is almost what they're doing you know like they make it worse so yeah it's this thing that can get out of control and uh there was definitely a moment when i was like fuck i'm going down on on a dirt road and i'm going way too fast um but i did manage to recover and steady the bike and slowed a lot slowed down quite a bit um yeah that same that same dirt road when i was 14 years old I did basically exactly what you just described. Uh, I was driving to band practice uh, in a Chevy S10, and um, I, coming up one of those last hills, kind of by that riverbed t- area that you're talking about, uh, there was a, a semi truck coming, and we were both kind of in the middle of the road, so I had to swerve to avoid head on, and then I overcorrected coming back on onto that like sand uh, shoulder, and I rolled the pick up three times i think uh was not wearing a seat belt and basically just got some cuts on my neck and my ears that's crazy yeah the uh so i ended up when the 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 pickup stopped rolling uh upright and um the driver's side is was completely you know smashed down because i guess that was the side that it kind of like rolled and bounced off of mm-hmm. probably after like the first roll you know like kind of bounces uh yeah that so i I guess not wearing my seatbelt saved my life probably i don't know maybe not oh wow that didn't even think about that that you were like pushed out of the way of the of like the smushed in car yeah yeah so if if you can picture it like i was overcorrecting, turning left you know Mm -hmm. so i guess the the first the first roll just like bounced me over to the passenger side right yeah stayed there yeah i was fine Wild. Um, okay, so my base was fine too. <laughs> Wait, you had got your a, ba- got a, base in the got cab? A, uh, no, 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 not in the cab. Uh, so it was a uh, S10 pickup truck with the the cover over the trunk or the the. God, I sound so unfarm boy like right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I'm. This the, is cringe covered, even uh, for me listening. Yeah, the the bed is covered. Whatever yes. that's called. Yep. Bed cover. 
uh you the, the the cap or a shell or whatever you want to call it yeah so yeah it was in in that and yeah it was fine that's awesome I hope it had a good case, or or you appreciated that case. Was not in a case. It was my first base. What? Uh, it was just laying I, in the back that I bought for like ninety dollars at a pawn shop. Yeah, it was just laying in the back. I mean, uh, like it got a couple chunks taken out of it, but like the electronics still worked and everything. Right, right. It wasn't snapped in half. That's awesome. I think I remember using a sharpie to like color it because it was a black P base. Right. And so I think I had used a sharpie to cover in like where the chunks had gone out, so you couldn't notice it. Right. I mean that's like touch up paint for anything black. So yeah, I mean the the Fender Custom Shop they probably get orders for, you know people people pay money for that kind of customization. It was relic. Um, okay, so <laughs> should we move on to this next scene? Jesus. Uh, so okay, so so after they kick all the underage drinkers out of the bar, they're discussing the issue. Dennis seems the most upset. Uh, everyone else is just kind of like a little dejected, maybe. I thought it was interesting here that they brought up the fact that, like, Mac, uh, Dennis was upset that no one carded. And Mac specifically says, that's not my job. Yeah, he was the first person to speak up, which is funny, because he is the bouncer later, I guess. Right. Do- so, door guy. so we haven't, yeah, we haven't really established his, his role. Uh, I feel the, like you don't, even, even when his role is established, you still don't see him doing his job. No. Other not, than, like, not other than, like, the, the ocular pat down. Well, I mean, when you have an ocular, ocular pat down skill such as his, like, what else do you need? Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah. So I thought that was interesting that he, it's established that he is not yet the bouncer. Then they go on to talk about the social responsibility of not having kids drink and Mac. Uh, there's like a slight pause when D says that that they do, and he says, "Well, I don't know about that." Um. There's a really funny moment. Uh. When Mac starts discussing his theory about them having a uh, social responsibility that he puts in air or scare quotes and yeah. throughout his little speech as to why it's better for them to possibly serve minors charlie starts like mimicking him but not in a mocking way in a yeah the way that like a just a small kid would get excited and do the like and uh, mirroring more so yes i don't know if you remember this or if you noticed this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um I think he says, like, this situation, and he, like, spreads his hands out to, like, indicate this area. And then he says, social responsibility with air quotes. And then by the end of it, Charlie, I guess Max stops doing hand motions, so Charlie just starts giving a random thumbs up and an (laughs) awkward smile, and it's so weird and good. Yeah, they have a very, like, juvenile way of, like, poking at each other. Well, I again, I don't think he's poking. I think he's supportive oh. and he's excited. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, that's how I read. I it. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. Like, like I said, he's definitely mimicking him, but not in a. I don't think it's in a mocking way. I think it's more just him getting excited and being like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and then "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He's like here, and then air quotes, and then thumbs up, and this just like shit eating grin, kind of weird smile. Uh, anyway, it was very funny. Um. But then he starts to chime in, and they all start to sort of agree with Mac and build on it. Uh, and that's when Charlie re- uh, references Nikki Potnik, because they, yes. you know, when they were young, dumb teenagers, they got in their friend's car, and they crashed it, and that happens to be Nikki Potnik. And I don't know what it is, but for some reason, in Always Sunny, whenever they reference someone from high school, the names that they come up with are always perfect, in my opinion. It's incredibly accurate. It just, like, it's... I don't know why, but or maybe it's just someone saying a first and last name of a person that you don't know in that scenario. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but yeah, because like you, I feel like when you're uh, out of high school, you don't call people by their first and last name as much. Right, or or when you just I don't know when you say it and you expect people to know it, kind of like it. It's yeah. just one of those funny things. You're like, yeah, when we cr- crashed Nicky Potnick's car. Uh, yeah, anyway. I guess people people tend to say your full name a lot. I feel like you're one of those people, <laughs> right? I do have a well, well, it's, yeah. It's, it's two two syllables. Yeah, exactly. My fir- my full name is is like shorter than most people's first name. Yeah, not most, but. So, what's your take on this? What, do you think it's safer to to encourage abstinence in in drinking or drugs in the youth, or do you think it's better to like if they're gonna do it? have a controlled environment that's a great question i might be a little biased because i have never drank or done any drugs but i don't know 
I, I've, you know, I've never had to deal with that yet. So I don't know what I would do in that scenario. I mean, I can pretty much say that I feel like this isn't the safe environment that they that they think it is. No, of course not. But I mean, but in in, general, in, a, in a real world in, scenario, because I mean, I feel like everyone knows like this person's parents who allow them to drink in their basement on weekends, you know? Right. I feel like those people exist in every town. Um, and it's like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Cause like, then they won't be driving. Right. Uh, you know, they will be, they probably won't get arrested. I mean, they still could get arrested, I guess, but like the, they're not in public. They're not hanging out by the train tracks. Exactly. Yeah. They're not reminds driving me of, like, Nikki the... Potnik's car down Kelly drive exactly. and crashing into exactly. a tree. It kind of reminds me of like the, the argument about like um, legalizing all drugs because right. it's like, well, people are going to do it. So do you want them to have like government regulated heroin and clean needles or do you want to criminalize it? You know, it's, it's the, that same argument, which is like, you know, been going on for as long as human history. Right. Or as that, long as like drug laws have been enacted. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm not even going to try and have an opinion. I mean, I don't know. Do I not have an opinion or do I not? What's your I hot know? take? Surely you have a hot take on I, this. I don't have a hot take. I mean... I, you know, because because I do think that like, well, if people are going to do illegal things, you might as well make it legal. I, I don't know if that's a great argument for everything. So where is the line? Sure. Um, you know, does does being a parent that allows kids to drink in their basement underage, does that encourage drinking? You know, right. it, it kind of does. I like mean, if, if you think it's a bad thing, then why wouldn't you want to discourage it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think preaching abstinence in anything will lead to more of it generally speaking i mean i guess if if i was when i was in high school i guess i wish that there was someone like that because where i'm from it's you're basically driving drunk you right. know if when no matter how you like try to try to party so it's like a little more dangerous i feel like in a in a maybe like a rural area maybe not yeah. i don't know yeah, no, I guess that does make sense. I I grew up in a in a place that I thought was the suburbs, but then as I like went to college and then, you know, grew up like and it seems all like like a almost urban in a sense because like I could walk everywhere. It wasn't urban yeah. at all, but it it felt that way compared to some other people's versions of suburbs. So, yeah, I you know, no one in my town needed to drive to to a someone else's house or a bar like it you know it may have been a mile and a half or you know may have been two miles or something that someone wouldn't want to walk but you totally so you're could blaming it on the suburbs mm, i don't know what i would be blaming i'm not sure i don't know i'm just trying to put i'm just trying to put words in your mouth it's not working you're trying to make my takes hotter yeah i don't have a hot take sorry. To season them okay well i, I tried but yeah i mean Drinking in someone's basement is safer than drinking by the train tracks, most likely. So, I, but I don't know. Anyway, cool. Moving on. Hand gestures are funny. Uh, what else is funny? Nikki Potnik is funny. Oh, also, I really appreciate that they set the groundwork for Dee's uh, nervous tick of vomiting. Yeah, I was really expecting the gag to start, but they just alluded to it, which makes me wonder if, like, Caitlin Olsen like saw a need for a skill and developed it or if it was just something she was born with I think the same same thing with uh with Max role as bartender I think a lot of this stuff probably naturally evolved and we're used to yeah. seeing the evolved state of you know season four five six whatever through mm -hmm. 13 whereas right now we're you know, we're at the point where they probably don't even know if the next episode is going to air. Right. You know. Yeah, definitely. Definitely in that stages. first season. I feel like I feel like there's stories around about like how that was just like on the precipice of being canceled. Hmm. And it kind of makes sense because it it was uh, it's not like an easy watch. Right. It's not for necessarily like casual viewing. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the first couple of seasons are, are better for that. Yeah, I don't know. I still think, yeah, if first season, last season... I think it's still pretty polarizing for people. Definitely, definitely, a, you know, niche sort of thing. Yes, the scene, scene, yeah, with D on the phone. 
Yeah, she's on the phone with her mother. Have we seen her mother yet? No. Oh, right. I don't neither. think we see her until Frank enters the picture. Right, right, right. Uh, but they do start establishing her demeanor um, in this episode, yes, I guess. definitely. So, yeah, so, so Dia's getting chewed out and nagged on by her mother, and she claims that she has to go because she has a date with Steven. Um, and it's a corny joke, but I like it. Yeah. Um, oh, and I'm pretty sure the uh, the DVD that she's putting on while she's on the phone with her mother is called Passion Beach. <laughs> that's amazing. I think that's what it's called. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, and then, obviously, she hangs up with her mother, and she goes to her end table and pulls out a, a vibrator. It says, hello, Steven. Porn on DVD. What a What a concept. Yeah. Back in the day. Landlines and everything. Uh, she ends up talking to Trey. He calls and she's like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be talking to you. And then he just, you know, says one, throws out one kind of like cheesy compliment pickup line. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it basically works right away. And then it cuts to uh, D and Trey at the park. Wait, 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 wait. You're skipping my favorite part of that scene. It's not a very long scene, but my Sorry, favorite part just... is... Uh, also, it's, uh, I think you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. There uh, you go. And yeah, it totally Genius. works. Which I th- think is really interesting because it it does, I mean, maybe all of them, but it definitely establishes both D and Dennis. Not, I guess this is, doesn't establish Dennis, but they both have a similar uh, response to like flattery. And they have like a certain vanity that they respond yeah, to. It, it doesn't take much. It just needs the right, the right cue. Right. So, um. Anyway, but the, I think, you know, when he invites her out, he says, uh, yeah, after my lacrosse came, a bunch of us are going up to Lemon Hill. And she goes, oh, that's where all the cool kids used to go. And she's like, so his response is, oh, so you've been there. She's like, oh, yeah, oh, like 200 times. Um, and her, just her facial expression and her delivery of, oh, that's where all the cool kids used to go. Like, it's just like paints her as very like earnest. And it doesn't, I don't know, obviously she's, dating someone in high school but or sort of but it sort of paints it in a positive light in the sense that she seems kind of pathetic not like like i don't know it it justifies it in a weird way and i guess that's maybe not cool for me to say but like i don't know she she reveals herself as pathetic and you know anyway she's a good actor it's cool yeah so then uh yeah so then we go to uh lemon hill and uh D is uh, really throwing it back. Yeah, she's drinking in the afternoon with high school kids. Also, side note, I had to Google it, but Lemon Hill is a part of Boathouse Row. Um, of course. I guess Lemon Lemon Hill is the name of one of the mansions, like on that in that strip. I guess so. Mm-hmm. I I had never heard it referenced when I lived there, but um, it it's part of the. In the opening credits, you'll you'll see them uh, sort of pan across a bunch of houses with Christmas lights. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, and course. that's that's Boathouse Row. Those aren't Christmas mm-hmm. lights. They're just up all the time. It's just like yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, so Lemon Hill is part of that. It's like the, you know, the, I guess they're on like, theoretically, they're supposed to be on the grassy section along the river. Yeah. And in actuality, it just kind of looks like uh, Griffith park a little bit yeah it really does look like any any la park yeah after that lemon hill scene we go back to the bar uh i guess it's that night when they post deciding to to move on with their plan of serving the the miners Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah yeah it's like a bunch of like uh rose colored glasses uh recalling high school right as like a magical time for uh mac and charlie which Apparently it was not, not unsurprisingly. Right. Yeah, this is where Dennis is like, are you guys kidding? Like, do you even remember high school? And then he references how Mac was, you know, only had friends because he was selling people weed. And Charlie was like a clown or a mascot who would like make everyone laugh. And no one was threatened by him. They would, you know, mm-hmm. if they knew that their girlfriends wouldn't sleep with him. Uh, wait, is that where? Right. So when he like kind of shuts them down and and points out like the sad reality of their high school history that's when there's like a brief pause and seemingly on unpro- obviously it was provoked but i feel like this is again establishing the, the uh this thing that they do is is uh charlie just blurts out 
<laughs> that Tim Murphy slept with Dennis's prom date. So good. And Mac like gets excited and I I think it's the kind of thing where he kind of wishes he said it or he had a similar thought and he kind of chimes in and says the exact same thing right after it. And mm-hmm. he just like reinforces it. Tim Murphy slept with your prom date. Like all excited to to join in. Um, yeah. The, at- the really impressive thing about this is that they, I mean, I guess it's maybe not that impressive, but they really went back to this episode for, uh, for content when they did the high school reunion episode. Because mm-hmm. Tim Murphy is in it. Nikki Potnik is the name that Frank takes, like <laughs> right. the the name tag. The name tag, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I just thought of that of of Nikki Potnik being Frank. Right. I well that that's one of the things that I like about Nikki Potnik in this. Maybe more so than if I had seen this episode without seeing the rest of the series. But I feel like they often bring people back, and it is it fits so well with like you know, they all grew up in the area and they haven't left. Yeah. So they have yeah, a bunch exactly. of high school friends that are still involved. Right. Like, you know, the last episode where, uh, I forget what her name is, but the woman who thinks that, or claims that Charlie's her fa- her son's father. Yeah. Uh, you know, just still having contact and interacting with all these people from high school and them being reoccurring it's, characters. Yeah. It's such a foreign concept to me, obviously, because, I mean, I haven't talked to anyone from my high school in decades. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know. But, yeah, but you know, like... You but can... if if they were still around, I would probably talk about them the same way that they're talking about them. Right. And and you know people that, you know, still live in Weskin, like, those people would definitely be talking about those people. Yes, definitely. Like the other, you know, because they're that's who's around. And it just, I don't know, I think I do like that because they still reference all of these people and it's still a part of their lives. Oh, anyway, the the other good thing about this, other than the fact that it's funny to see uh, Charlie just like use the nuclear option to like win an argument by just blurting out that Tim Murphy slept with Dennis's prom date, mm-hmm. is that Dennis kind of like shrinks back and gets really upset by it. And then they yes. start mocking him and asking, oh, is he going to cry? Are you going to cry? Is baby going to cry? Uh, and then they, they end the scene by by Charlie leaning over and saying, "Did you see that? He was totally gonna cry." Uh, to the person next to him, and as you pan over, it's the that first very very underage actor with braces that we saw in the first scene. Um, and it's just so funny that I don't know why, but she was just there the whole time, and the way Charlie's like interacting with her, it's even more juvenile, I guess. Yeah, it kind of sets him up as being the like the like gossip hound that he he becomes later in this episode. Like he right. really thrives on it and pays attention to everyone's problems. Right, and and he really puts him on their level. Like instead of being like the parent, the cool parent that lets them drink, he really becomes like one of them. Anyways, um. So I guess whatever, that's that night. And uh, anything else about this scene that you like? I don't think so. I just want to get to uh, Trey's car because I think <laughs> he has, has one of the, the best lines of this episode. Um, yeah, so um, we're, we're, we cut to Trey's car and post Lemon Hill on their date. Um, so I think we, have, we both have different favorite parts of the scene. Mine... Mm-hmm. Mine is when, you know, because they're talking about how, whatever, I don't know what they're talking about. I think they're talking about Trey's breakup and whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it's an intimate moment. At the end of the date, he's dropping her off, blah, blah, blah. And then he leans in to kiss her, and she leans in to kiss him. And then at the last moment, she says, wait. She has this really high-pitched, like, funny mm-hmm. wait, which is kind of my favorite part. Yeah, it's very good. It's so good. Um, yeah, so my, my favorite line in this is, uh, I've never statutory raped anyone before. Um, so good. That's just a really, really powerful line. Uh, his reaction is pretty reasonable. Um, let's take it slow. Yeah, he's he's just like, oh, okay, that's cool, no problem. Yeah, let's just uh, we'll just take it slow. Another, yeah, and that seems to also work on on D. You're so sweet. Right, she's just like she's really falling for Trey. Exactly. Um, is so it them, established? Yes. Is it established what? Is Trey a f- like a football player or something? He's wearing a le- letter jacket, so I wasn't sure. Uh, lacrosse. Lacrosse. Their Lemon Hill date is after his lacrosse game. Aha, yes. He's actually uh, playing with a lacrosse stick in his room when they're on the phone. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. 
which also makes sense be, because uh, I don't not to uh, uh, abandon or offend anyone in, in the audience who might be whatever. Does like does lacrosse exist anywhere outside of high school? Like college, I'm sure it exists there, but it seems like there's a really dramatic peak sort of in high school and college uh, for lacrosse. Yeah. Um, obviously my school did not have it, but, um, I, f- I feel like it's maybe in the same league as like volleyball, which is, you know, at least where I'm from, like volleyball was extremely popular mm-hmm. and I feel like high school is the only level and that people really support. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe there's a volleyball player listening to this right now. Well, here's the thing that hates me. Right. And, and so you have your, your volleyball haters and I have my lacrosse haters, but or that's a weird way to say that because usually when you say that it means the person hates that thing. Exactly. But I'm referencing people who do the thing that hate us. Anyway, um from my perspective, I'm probably skewed because my dad taught like volleyball adult education at, you know, like in my hometown and yeah. he he plays beach volleyball every summer and my aunt and her boyfriend like travel to see college volleyball like then never mind, I was wrong. All like all over so they're like my parents go to college volleyball games lo- locally like they're really into it so so in high school it's a thing but in college i think it is pretty popular but i would is say it... l- lacrosse is just as might be just as popular i don't know yeah but i would say and this might be my perspective i feel like beach volleyball is like a thing that's what i was just going that's where i was going next it, um it cuz it's an olympic sport right i don't is lacrosse an Olympic sport? I have no idea. It seems like I know. Not, I don't know. It seems like know. it would be in the sense that like there are plenty of weird Olympic sports like you know fucking the the frisbee or whatever the like the discus and like things that you wouldn't think of. Whereas lacrosse, like you're like, oh yeah, my my brother played lacrosse in high school. Like, why would that not be an Olympic sport? Uh, apparently, it is an Olympic sport. There you go. I would have. Yeah. I would have hoped, but. I, you know, I don't know anyone who's, like, played lacrosse outside of high school. Or, like, it's not a pickup game, whereas, like, volleyball, no, it's like, it, oh, if there was a, you know, it also kind of it I would even do it. Yeah, yeah, it also kind of has a, a, like, prep school vibe or, like, a private school vibe. I Again, I have no frame of reference for that, but that's just kind of what I feel. In your prep school, did a lot of people <laughs> play lacrosse? Huh? I was just joking, and I couldn't say it with a straight face, but joking oh. about you going to prep school. Yeah. I didn't go to prep school. Weskin Academy. Um, yeah, we we had, um, there was volleyball for girls in the fall, football for boys. Uh, winter was boys and girls basketball. Spring was boys and girls track and field. And that's that's all. For some reason, I would think uh, baseball would be popular. Nope. I mean, there the people play it like when I was a little kid, I played baseball like in the summer, very, very casually. Um, I mean, it, it's it was a it was a intra city, intra city, right. yeah, sport, yeah. And so we just like played the next town over, right? Like once or twice a summer, and you practice in the mornings, once a week, twice a week. Mm-hmm. as i recall but it wasn't like a school uh organized right. sport interesting it just seems like very american pie uh sorry apple pie very american well, like i'm yeah. wondering if it's i'm wondering if it's because there's not enough people mm. how many yeah. people are on a baseball team it seems like there's a lot yeah but i mean i would think just as many as a football team no i don't know but yeah we uh my my high school played six-man football oh, oh okay yeah 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 in that case, then yes, maybe maybe the baseball doesn't function the same way, right? Uh, anyway, moving on. Where where do we go after? Um, oh, back to uh, the bar. The, back to the bar, and everyone's like they're trying to figure out why everyone is so drunk, which I don't. They don't really resolve. Yeah, that is weird, you know. But uh, I guess maybe they're trying to reference like people acting more drunk than they are because that's a thing for sure. Definitely, definitely. I guess that's it. They they just. It's just never really followed up on, which is, yeah, which right. is 
a little strange, but um, there's no joke. Yeah, this... It's just like, oh, remember in high school when people acted way more drunk than they were? Yeah, yeah, cool. exactly. Um, yeah, but Charlie is... breaks up a, uh, a, a like a lovers quarrel, right? In this a very where we funny see, way. We see Sarah for the first time in her terrible acting. Um, I feel like Charlie Day ad libbed that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, his, his entrance to the the quarrel it's, yeah. it says hey like twelve times. He was saying hey when he's like waiting for the next thing. Yeah. And then what does he say? What I think he says eyes up here or eyes on me. <laughs> yeah, so, he points to his like eyes. That. He's like hey yeah. hey hey eyes on me eyes on me look at me look at me cool. And then he says cool your jets and then yeah. immediately sends the guy away kicks him out. Cool your jets. Um, All right, beat it. Sorry kind of has like a the same feel as um if you recall the professor which was what he was called when he was the school janitor i feel like he had the same like you give him any tiny uh bit of authority and that that's what that's the he instantly goes into like high school principal mode interesting i don't remember him being the uh the professor yeah he uh he he takes an orange out of the trash can um, and the the kid that's walking by when he does that addresses him as the professor <laughs> or professor. Anyway, so yeah, so he he breaks up this quarrel. He sends this guy off with a stern warning or whatever, and then he checks in with Sarah and uh, and you know, make sure she's okay. And and I guess Mac is like, you know, after that's all settled, Mac kind of reacts and he's like, "Dude, that was amazing." And they were just like, you know responding to uh charlie's just like sort of animal instinct when he just kind of like blew up but i guess that's all it has it you know that's all there is oh no they also uh this is also when we see tammy for the first time yeah tammy i was just gonna say tammy is introduced um i believe she's only been discussed before uh in regards to trey it's like maybe once or twice someone says like tammy and trey Right, and and Trey references her when in the car talking about his breakup. Yeah, um, and I guess now would be the time to bring up that the the actor playing um, Tammy is Jamie Alexander. Oh, I looked up and she was on a show called Blind Spot. Um, I don't know anything about it other than I think she has tattoos. It's like Memento, kind of. Uh, you saying her character on the show? Yeah. Okay. But I feel like, are you just referencing that because she's, you know, that's a popular show and that people might have seen that? She's she's yeah, she went on to become famous. Right, but also I mean, I've never seen that show nor have I seen the 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 movie I'm about to reference, but the wasn't she in the Thor movie? She was. I seem like wouldn't that be like her claim to fame more so or no? Maybe I mean I feel like we're not the best people to ask because I don't think either one of us really watched network TV. Right. Um, I feel like if it, if it was a show on at like eight p.m. on Wednesdays, I like my parents would probably know the show. Right. Yeah. So I guess this is a, a weird thing, but we're both trying to explain why she's famous by referencing yeah. shows yeah. and movies we've never seen. Yes. So, but I know that she is famous because I thought she looked sort of familiar. Uh, do, do you think she's famous because she had a Wikipedia page that said she was in stuff? No, I mean she's the star of a, a network TV show. Oh, in like Blind, that, that's, Blind Spot. Yeah, she she's she is the star. she is the the star. She oh, is the lead. Right. I would. I didn't read that part. I guess. I mean, I just just, just Google it real quick. Just Google Blind Spot TV show, and oh, she has a cool haircut. Yeah. See, she's. I, I referenced her as being evil hot. Um, whoa, she looks even like more evil in Blind Spot. Um. Anyways, I don't. Does anything really happen with Tammy? Oh yeah, she she blackmails Dennis. God damn it! No, she doesn't. She doesn't no? do that yet. She simply approaches him and says that she's, you know, she's like, hey, she's like trying to seduce him, and he's like, are you in high school? And she's like, and he's. He's dismissive, and then she says, don't worry, dude, I'm 18. Listen, dude, I'm legal, and I love to party. And I love to party. And he's like, are you in high school? She's like, yeah. And he's like, all right, then go away. I can't deal with, you know, like, no. And then she's like, I forget what she says, but um, she says something, and she's being seductive, and she puts his number, her number, in his pocket and kind of, like, walks off. Because she's, like, super confident, you know. 
Yes. And evil. I believe, uh, yeah, she's like, do you like what you see? Mm-hmm. And then calls him by his full name, which is a very, very powerful way to introduce yourself to someone. Oh, you know what? I think this might be part of it, but I think she actually, she might even ask. She like tries to confirm it, I think. I think at the intro, I think she might say, are you Dennis Reynolds? Mm-hmm. Which sort of makes sense in context of the full show. Yeah, so I guess her she's putting her plot into motion. Right, 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 right. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so, and then uh, also I don't know if this if I'm like reading too much into everything, but uh, as she walks away, uh, Dennis feeling like the conflicting sort of thing and the the intensity from her as she walks away, he just goes, "God damn it!" And he delivers a "God damn it" that I feel like they do. It, yeah. I feel like that is a phrase. Uh, D delivers it my favorite way in various episodes, but uh, but I think that's a common uh, expression. It's an always sunny, yeah. It's an always sunny uh, trope, I guess. Right. So I think that I might be the first time we see it. Um, anyway, so that's the end of that one, and then we move on to D's apartment uh, when Dennis comes in angry about you know being like solicited by this person. And, uh, oh, I guess someone references D. Oh, that's it. Tammy must reference D and Trey hooking up, which, again, reveals her sinister plot. Um, does she? I think she does. I think she's like, okay. I think your sister's been hanging out with this boy from my class. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Subtly yeah, yeah. Right, just, right. like, yes. referencing it. And that's yes. why Dennis bursts into D's apartment and says... I know you were hanging out with that high school kid from the bar. She's like, oh, he just needed me to be there for him. Um, and and then uh, I forget what happened. Oh, and Dennis says that you've been living out some kind of like sick fantasy, you know, like dating the cool kid from high school. And she's like, what are you talking about? I dated a, a bunch of people, cool people in high school. And Dennis is like, what are you talking about? You were in that uh, that giant back brace until you were 20. <laughs> He's like, everyone thought you were a monster. Which is also funny because they have established her uh, being a monster for having like a weird fucked up back and being in this giant back brace. Because mm-hmm. they haven't yet coined the phrase aluminum monster. Yes, you're correct. Um Anyway, oh, so, and then, and then he, I'm trying to get to this part because my favorite part of the scene is when D reacts, but at, at the end of it, Dennis is basically, like, telling her that she's just as bad as Charlie and Mac, like, with this, like, you know, with this, like, romanticized view of high school, to which mm-hmm. she, like, snarls her face in the best way and says, <laughs> uh, what did she say? Oh, she says, do, do not. not compare me to Mac and Charlie. But then there's a cut to uh, right. uh, Charlie's apartment, and he's uh, huffing glue, and um, the, it's like, whatever, it's non-toxic Elmer's glue, <laughs> so he's not really going to achieve anything, but... Um, something's happening. Yeah, he, something's, something's happening. Happen. Yeah, I, I think something's I happening. That. Something's it, happening. It, it's not going to happen. And it's yeah, so that, good. Yeah, Max says, uh, see, it says right here, this is safe and non-toxic. We don't want safe, we want toxic. Um, and that's when they get the phone call from Sarah about the party happening. Yeah, yeah. So after they discuss going, and he's like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. Um, so then they they walk in, and it's, you know, awkward. Um, just, like, people standing around not talking, no music or quiet music. And it's we were argu- arguing about this, but I'm 98% positive that in the establishing shot of the party, the waitress is an extra, basically. In a blue tank top, I, with her hand in front of her face, I get it. It's a similar haircut, but like honestly, I'm telling you, that's her. In the mid 2000s, that was a very popular haircut in Philadelphia, at least. Sure, I I'm I'm standing I, by it. I don't think it is. I wish there was some way of finding out. We're gonna let our crack team of super sleuth uh, fans and listeners jump on it, and we're gonna make yes. a poll. Go to the Twitter. Go to the twitch.stream account and vote for whether you think that is the waitress or not. It definitely is. I don't think it is. Um, anyways, but yeah, they, the, uh, what's her name, Sarah, uh, yeah. kind of a- applies the same flattery technique that's been used already in this episode right. a couple times. Um, we were just talking about how cool you guys are. <laughs> right, and that changes everything. 
of course. Yeah, so uh, so she convinces Mac and Charlie to uh, to get a keg, um, or I guess they actually they do a really good cut there too. So Mac and Charlie are saying no that they won't do it because like at the bar it's they have a little more control, so they know you know blah blah blah. Which I don't know how that works, but um, and then yeah, so when she says, "Oh come on, please," we were just talking about how cool you were. Yeah, this would be the coolest thing anyone's ever done. They like look at each other, and then it cuts to them like. Rolling in a keg, everyone cheering, and then them saying, who wants to do keg stands? If you can believe it, I've never done a keg stand. I can believe it. And this probably is going to sound stupid, but I don't know what the purpose of it is. See how long you can drink upside down? Yeah, the that's the part I don't understand. The upside down. What does the upside down part do? I have no idea. Does it make it harder? And that's the Maybe? point? Maybe? I don't know. Because there's a, um, have you ever shotgunned a beer? Um, I don't think I have. So, but I mean, I, I understand the point is because it goes, it just jams it down your throat. Right. Because like when you're pouring something out of a, you know, container with one hole in it, it has, the air has to come in as the liquid's going out to like displace it. So it gets yeah. this like blub, 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 you know, whereas if you put a second hole in it, the air comes in one hole and the liquid goes out the other. So it makes perfect sense. But being yeah. upside down seems like it would be harder. I wouldn't want to yeah, drink I don't water know. through a straw upside down. Should I Google it? Sure. I mean, we're wasting valuable time, but yeah. This is, this is important. There is a Wikipedia for keg stand. Drinking activity where the participant does a handstand on a keg of beer and attempts to drink as much as possible at once or to drink for as long as possible. That's, that's all I got. So I guess... I guess the 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 actual upside down part is just for show, because the the point of the cake stand is to just drink for as long as you can. Yeah, I, I don't. Oh, here's uh, oh Reddit, perfect. I mean, maybe it'll like you have like a rush of blood to the head. Man, even Reddit doesn't know. Yeah, I think it's I think it's um. Oh wait wait wait. Purely for decoration. One person says. The theory is that alcohol will hit you faster because you're upside down and the blood is rushing to your brain. Um, I mean, I could see it like making you dizzy or whatever when you get put back on the ground. Anyways, uh, Charlie gets to like 27 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and then, uh, whatever. Oh, right. And so we we have that same um, same sort of awkwardness when Trey and Dee show up at the party. D feels awkward, even though the party's kind of happening. She's like, "Oh, I don't know. This is uh, this is weird. I don't know about this. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Your friends don't really like me." And he's like, "No, come on, it'll be cool." And then when she enters the room with uh, Charlie and Mac, Charlie's got like foam beer foam dripping off his chin. So good. And their interaction is even more awkward, and it kind of hits a pinnacle where they're like, "Oh yeah, you're here." They're both kind of embarrassed to be at a high school party, but mm-hmm. also realizing like, "Well, you're here too." And then immediately, one of them is like, uh, You want to do a keg stand? stand? 75! 76! 77 seconds! That is a new record, baby! Whoa! Uh, so that's cool. They broke the ice. Max playing flip cup, which I have, I oh have my God. plenty of flip cup in yeah. my time. Um, and Mac, I have two. I think I have, which doesn't make any sense, but... It's just like a fun... It's a fun thing. Right. I didn't drink. No, I know, but, but I'm just saying, like, but I, th- I could see someone being, like, <sighs> inviting you to play regardless. And then this, the final scene at this party that night is when uh, they cut to uh, Sarah annoyingly and poorly acted uh, sharing gossip with Charlie. And that sort mm-hmm. of, you know, I think that's when he's really, that's where he was really radicalized. Yeah, then they cut to the, the next morning when everybody's passed out in the living room. And Dee's, Dee's hair is all a mess, and she goes and kicks Charlie and, and Mac and wakes them up. And they quietly, like, have to go. And uh, I think, I forget who it says at first, but I think Dee is like, oh, man, we got to get out of here. This is getting weird. Trey just asked me to prom. I don't know. This is a mistake. And yeah. then they're both like, what? That's And then Charlie's like, oh, man, that's so weird, because Sarah asked me to prom. And he's so he's so casual about it. That makes it, makes it even funnier. And obviously... Mac reacts negatively and says, "Like what? No, this we this is ridiculous. We cannot go to prom." <laughs> and they both look over and they're like, "Huh? We? We? Who, who asked you to prom?" 
And, you know, I don't think he answers. He's just like, come on, let's go. This is ridiculous. Um, so it's been established that two of them have been asked to prom. Yes. Not back. Um, so then so then... this, yeah, so it must have started with Friday night, and then uh, Lemon Hill must have been Saturday, and then the party was Saturday night. So this is Sunday morning when they're, like, waking up after the party. Mm-hmm. And now we're cutting to... Dennis's apartment. There's a knock at the door, and it's Tammy. So Dennis, this answers. is where she, this is where she blackmails him. Yeah. So Dennis answers the door in sweatpants and a t-shirt because you know it's Sunday morning and he's just waking up and blah blah blah. Um. So he's probably not very excited to see her because she's like trying to seduce him and he's trying to avoid it, even mm-hmm. though she's evil hot. I guess yeah. She just basically says, "I need a date for for the prom, and you're gonna take me." And he's like, "No, that's that's not gonna happen." And at some point, she leans in and grabs his dick mm-hmm, mm-hmm. as she's explaining how things are going to go, um, which I didn't notice. I've seen this episode several times. I didn't notice it until my final watch, like, last night. Yeah, apparently that was a real crotch grab. The The actor was encouraged to actually go in for the grab by Rob McElhenney, and so the I guess Dennis's reaction is genuine. Oh my god, that's amazing. Which is pretty amazing that he, like, course corrects and comes back to recite his lines. Hey, I, oh, you gotta go. Isn't there anything I can do to change your mind? No. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, right. I, I want to watch would be it. be very surprising. Yeah, well, now I want to watch it knowing that, and see where the cuts are, see if there's, like, if he got, like, one line out, or if he finished the, like, entire scene, whether it's just one cut. I mean, she really does play, like, femme fatale, like, evil, like, it, she does it really well. She does. And that, that just adds to it. So, basically, her, her proposition, her blackmail, is that she's going to uh, tell the cops that they've been serving minors if he doesn't take her to the prom. It's a really powerful play. It's the smart move. I mean, they own the bar. So there's a lot at stake. Right, yeah. So, you know, she puts him in a position where he has really no choice. Yeah. Um, Very smart. So, yeah. So uh, so that her plan is laid out, and we jump back to the bar, um, and Dennis is freaking out, uh, saying, like, oh, wait, actually, that's a... I don't, I don't know if it matters, but um, I guess that shows the alley with Mac, Charlie, and Dee coming in from the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dee is wearing... Charlie's jacket, which is just kind of a cute thing. It's funny because it's they don't reference it and there's no need for it, but it totally makes sense that like, you know, Sunday morning, like going back from, you know, early coming back from the shitty bar, like, you know, D was like D was dressed to go out, so she was wearing basically nothing, you know, like a super yeah. small top. Anyway, yeah. Charlie's a gentleman, that's all I'm trying to say. Um, so that's when Dennis is freaking out and says no more underage drinking and he explains mm-hmm. that he got blackmailed. And then they're like, oh, that's funny. We got asked too. And he's like, well, yeah, but you don't have to go. They're this like, scene is, is very similar to the scene in the first episode when Dennis is like, no more gay bar. Right, right. And then, yeah, and Mac agrees Extremely with him. Extremely right? similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when Dennis admits that, he has to, that he's going to go to prom because he has to or else they'll lose the bar or get arrested or whatever. Then mm-hmm. Charlie's like, well, if you're going to go, I'm going to go. I didn't get to go in high school. And and D says the same thing. Well, I'm going to go. And then Mac gets super pissed and storms off. Oh, that yeah. And Charlie suggests they have a pre-prom party. Um, And then it just kind of like cuts to same location, but on prom night. And they're all wearing tuxes. Yeah, they're all decked out in tuxes, except D, who is super wasted and looks like a weird princess. Yeah, she's wearing a crown, I think. Yep. Which um, actually, which is really funny because in the in the uh, Stephen scene or from earlier when she was on the phone with her mom, mm-hmm. there's like a weird like Burger King paper crown sitting over her lamp, her like desk, her night night end table, whatever. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't well, think and, it's the same one, but just odd. And we know that we know that she alludes to having done beauty pageants um, in Frank's Little Beauties because she's like the coach. Or one of the one of the coaches, and she he has the most experience, right? And that makes sense with her mother, and yeah, what we know about her mother's personality. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. So pre prong, D's drunk, everyone's in tuxes. Um, 
Oh, that's another point where Mac brings up again. He says, uh, when she's really drunk, he's like, that dude's going to bang your sister. Um, yeah, and there's just a really funny scene where they're talking about <clears throat> how, or she's, I think she is talking about how she couldn't uh, go to prom because the... My back brace was under the dress, and Mom called me fat. So I stayed home and cried instead. Take, take slow. Take it slow. Yeah, I, I think I refer... Because she's already wasted, and she's, and like, yeah, pouring herself a shot. Right, which is which makes sense because uh, the whole like nervous thing from earlier, like whenever you exactly you know they they reference uh, oh I don't think we mentioned it but when they're talking about crashing Nikki Potnik's car, mm-hmm. they also reference D throwing up on the headrest because uh-huh. uh because someone liked her and something you know whenever she gets involved with somebody that she really likes she gets really nervous so yeah. she's apparently drinking because of it and uh, yeah when Dennis says take it slow take it slow i think i feel like he's giving the advice but he's like not saying it loud enough because he knows it's not going to be heated yeah it's so it's, it's a very defeated sort of thing yeah. and um and this is where mac shows up in full uh tux you know prom you know set up and they're like wait what are you what's going on and he's like yeah i'm going to prom and they're like oh my god you're gonna crash the prom he's like yeah i'm going stag don't worry and they're like yo it's bad enough we're going sort of like you can't do that. Um, so Mac is undeterred and he is ready to go to prom. Did you go to prom? Uh yes, I did, but I also called it the prom and I thought it was awkward when people called it prom. Yeah, I feel like there's like, like going different... going to the hospital versus going to hospital. Yeah. Like going like... to college versus wait, no. No to university. That's different. No, well, yeah, I mean that that to me makes more sense because it's like a thing, whereas like like if it were a fair, you wouldn't say you were going to fair. It's not a. It's not like a permanent place. Like not like you're going to to like Texas. I'm pretty. I'm pretty flexible with it, but I, I want. I want. I want to hear this out. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why, but and and you know, it's one of those things. I th- I'm sure like every region or area or whatever. I mean, maybe. I, I'm. I'm assuming that everyone in my high school said the same thing, but it yeah. always. You know, I wouldn't. Th- the best way I could say is like the fair if you were going to the fair or like to the movies going does anyone say going to, i'm going to fair is that even a thing no no that that's what i'm that's how it felt in in my experience growing up because it was always referenced as the prom like are you going to the prom or yeah um i guess you wouldn't say like there were certain times when you wouldn't say it mm-hmm. like you wouldn't say the prom night because it would be prom night because the night would be you know uh, like prom would almost be the adjective maybe or something yeah you, that describes so it wouldn't be the i don't know it just it was a weird thing but but i did go to the prom and it was stupid um i don't know did you have a prom like we did wait did uh, let's go back to yours okay, um, okay. <laughs> did you have a date i did have a date i was i was dating uh someone from my class at the time nice nice Nice. Um, what did you wear? Did you rent a tux? I assume I rented a tux. I'm that's... sure there's photos of it somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are. Um, but yeah, it was just pretty, pretty boring. You know, I hung out with a few people. It was just like I never liked weddings or uh, did a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs growing up in New York. Yeah. Um, formal events. Yeah, just like ugh, they're kind of the worst. I don't really dance. I don't like bad food. Um, I mean, I do like bad food, but I don't like the bad version of good food, which is what they have, I think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was, you know, it was kind of whatever. Waste of time and money, but. Bless you. I need a, I need a cough button. Um. Yeah, so at my high school, obviously, there was like, I think when I graduated, there were a total of 30 people in, you know, freshman, sophomore junior senior um so we so you're, did you're have saying prom. There approximately like six or seven people in each grade level essentially i mean there were six in my class right. i think um but um yeah so they they did have prom but you could go to it all four years of high school if you wanted to right otherwise it would be like there would be no one there four people I don't remember any year other than my senior year um, but I, 
that was the only year that I had a date. I was uh, not super popular romantically, romantic wise. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, but I, also I, if you have, <laughs> if you have like not romantically, but if you had like one or two friends, that seems like very socially popular in context because you're totally. you're good friends with half of the people in your class. Yes. Yeah. I, I well, my 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 type type bros, uh, two of the like three type bros that I had, uh, they uh, they graduated. You know, they'd already graduated. So, right. Um. So yeah, I just took my my friend's little sister. Okay. And which was and it wasn't like romantic in the least. You know, it was just like I want somebody to. Right. Come you along. Want- so I don't look like a total loser. I guess I don't know. It seems odd that I would take it seriously like that but i think that's what i was feeling right yeah i mean like somebody to dance with somebody to talk to like somebody you know yeah. to go with yeah i mean that makes yeah. sense i remember like dancing a couple times and then i think that was it i think i took her home did do you think that she was excited to go with you or with anyone or to go at all maybe i don't know dude it was so long ago also I, so geez, i i, I have... know it was exactly <laughs> the same length um yeah i don't know i think i think that i I feel like occasionally I would bow down to like the societal norms mm-hmm. yeah. out there because you can't be you can't always be a contrarian. Um, so yeah, I did I did prom. I think there was like an after prom party that was like school sanctioned, so kids wouldn't drink. Mm-hmm. Don't really remember that. Yeah, I don't know. It was a stupid thing. Um, what was your prom night? Uh, prom date's name? Well, uh, what was your friend's name? And then what was his, his little sister's name? Friend's name was Dave. Dave, what? Come on, laugh. Well, okay, I was, I was okay. Well, here's here's the story. I was, uh, that year of high school, I was playing in a ska band. Right, and I was it playing. Was, it was the late nineties, <laughs> totally. Yeah, and I was I was playing the baritone sax with the ska band. That was that was from a town like a couple hours away, and it was the trumpet player from that band, his little sister, oh, Sharon. Okay. Her name her name was Sharon. Sharon, I think. Last name. That sounds right. Come on. Don't know. Don't know. I'm trying, dude. I don't know. Because it wasn't like someone I grew up with. Right, right, right. But, um, yeah, I used to, like, drive two hours to band practice, like, once a week. It's right. so stupid. So stupid. Did that band um, play shows? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we gigged. Oh, well. But that's... it was always, like, well, it was always, like, my, because, like, my, my first band ended up, like, kind of lasting a long time. So we we were also playing shows, so I would just, like, do a double header. Oh, oh, double Our book. bands played together all the time, yeah. So I would just bassist and singer of one band and then baritone sax player of the other band, and yeah. Which band was better? I think they were both pretty bad at that point. My high school band, uh, we ended up getting, I would say, a lot better, but not that doesn't mean it was good. But the ska band was just kind of like, uh, no one really could play, so it was like really bad. But I, I feel like that was kind of the style then. It was like really sloppy ska. Right. I mean, with like distorted guitars and shit. Operation Ivy, baby, come on. Yeah, I mean that's an exceptional version of that right. genre. I I often listen to that discography and think like these are like hit songs. These are like singles. Like they're so good. Yeah, doesn't Tim Armstrong like write pop songs now? Oh, probably. He's just like one of those guys who just writes songs. Well, um, I mean, jumping back into it, they're, uh, they're, you know, they're at their prom party and Mac shows up and does that thing. And, uh, this is where, um, the three of them, uh, I don't know where, I guess D, uh, maybe Trey shows up and D accosts him and kind of like, is like drunkenly pawing at him. Mm-hmm. And so the three guys are all in their tuxes and that's when Tammy walks in, um, uh, and she's wearing this, like, this, like, small red dress and the... The uh, music changes to this like flamenco style. Yes, yes, and it's really great. Um, and it's I don't know if it's slow motion, but it's it's a very dramatic entrance, and all three of them are like, "Oh my god!" And you know, I think one of them says, "Who's that?" And Dennis is like, that. "Yeah, yeah." He's like, "Oh god, that's my prom date." He's like really like frustrated and upset about it. Um, so this that's when Charlie and Max sort of change over, and they're like, "Damn, oh my god." You're so lucky. No, I think one of them says, how old is she? And 
they and he's like she's 18 and they're like oh my Mm -hmm. god you're so lucky and he's like wait a second you were just like giving me shit for being a creep and like dating freshmen and when we were in high school like so what are you saying now and they're like whatever man you're good to go and they're like so you guys are giving me the go ahead i mean can i go ahead hi dennis so that's when everything sort of changes for dennis and he realized that he's got like societal approval from his immediate, you know, peers. Kind of for once on the show. Like, maybe this is the only time. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, he's also, like, really sketchy and, like, manipulative and all yes. those things. So if they're not encouraging him, then it, it's probably justified. Um, but this is the point, you know, as she's walking up, um, they sort of have this introduction. I think Dennis is getting excited because before he was, like, begrudgingly doing this out of, like, blackmail and he was conflicted. And now he's sort of got this permission from from his his friends um and that's when Mm -hmm. i think trey comes over trey sees tammy and dennis together he comes up and says can i have a word with you and then they step back and start talking and they kind of get into a little bit of a heated argument you can sort of see it from a distance yeah and and that's when charlie goes off into his gossip speech which is amazing Mm -hmm. i don't know why it just seems like such a good well rehearsed like it's very detailed Yeah. yeah that's tammy Trey's ex-girlfriend. This is classic Tammy. Trey broke up with Tammy because Maureen Canalan said that she saw Tammy flirting with Walt Timmy at a party, but she was only doing it to make Trey jealous because, you know, she thought that Trey secretly liked Aaron Hennebree, but Trey didn't like Aaron Hennebree. It was all a bunch of bull. What is happening? Charlie drops into, like, the same exact speech, and they cut him off. Yeah, verbatim, yeah. It's so good. Classic Tammy. Right, right. Cla- classic this is classic Tammy. Tammy. Um, and then it... <laughs> I guess uh, they're, like, trying to figure out what's going on. And then eventually we see uh, Trey and Tammy kiss. And Mm -hmm. that's when they uh, realize, like, what's happening and blah, blah, blah. And, again, that's when uh, Mac chimes in with... uh, That dude's going to bang your prom date, bro. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. It's not funny. Which Yeah, which is the culmination of them constantly telling him that someone's going to either bang his sister or someone banged or is going to bang his prom date. Um... That's when they start yelling. I don't know why, but uh, everyone starts yelling at each other, and it's a very classic, always sunny, hate it or love it yelling moment, um, mm-hmm. which I think Dee leaves because she has to pee, and then Char- uh, Max yelling at her, and he's like, yeah, yeah. fine, go pee. Yeah. And then Dennis storms off for some other reason, and then things calm down, and there's just a weird moment where Mac goes, I hate you, Charlie, <laughs> then leaves. Yeah, I, I, thought that, I thought that part was really weird. But yeah, I again, I think that's sort of similar to what we've seen before, where he just needs something to say. Yeah, exactly. It's he, like needs, the, he needs something to abuse. Yeah, like the one-upsmanship of like, it's a very childish response, and, and it makes a, for a good ending of that scene and episode. Yeah. Well, not fully, but... Um, so after the next commercial break, we come back to the final scene, which is another favorite of mine because it involves Charlie, um, which is Charlie, because Dennis and Dee both lost their prom dates, but Charlie didn't, so Charlie still got Sarah. So we cut to high school prom, Charlie slow dancing with Sarah, and it looks like they're having a really nice time. Um, what is it? Uh, it's a version of Forever Young? I think it's the, yeah, it's the Alphaville, the OG. It's weird. Forever Young. Yeah, it's like super familiar, but then I was like, wait a second, does this have anything to do with the other Forever Young? Um, what, anyway. the, what sh- the Rod Stewart Rod Forever Stewart. Young? Rod Stewart, yeah. Like it's like a, I, I, think they're, I think they're separate totally different. entities, yeah. It's just funny. It's, I mean, I, not that it's like a, a... I mean, it's a common enough phrase that <clears throat> it makes sense, but it was just like a really weird mind fuck when I was like, holy shit, is this... A, is, are they covers of each other? Like, what's going on? Um, but they just use the same sentence, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's a really great song for them to slow dance to. And then uh, Sarah's ex-boyfriend comes in, cuts in, and Charlie, as the gentleman that he is, allows it and says, yeah, you two kids have fun. Um, it's a very fi- it's a very fitting end to Charlie's arc in this episode, where he's like participating in the high school gossip as sort of an outsider. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know he's also participating to a very small extent, and then yeah, I feel like that was a nice little bow to wrap that one up. Yeah, and <clears throat> and I also like the fact that it kind of goes into bookends where 
once he lets them dance, he kind of like drifts a little bit over to himself and he, he just gets to dance by himself to this song and this, you know, he's, he's at prom, he's dancing. He's, he gets, I think, I think he, honestly, he gets what he wants in the best possible way. Totally. Um, and it's cute and he's fun. It is, it is uncharacteristically cute for Always Sunny. Uh, but not, I would say, but not for Charlie. Sure. Or for season one. Yeah. And that's the end of the episode. Anyways, this is um this is the third of what is it seven, seven episodes in the first season. Very short. Yeah, it's a shorty. That is the end. We have no more things to discuss. Nate has to get to school, and I have to start cleaning. Yes. Life calls. Life beckons. Yeah. So maybe this is in a dump of several episodes at a time. Maybe it's not. But as you can tell, we're getting better and better. Although this one didn't really feel as good. To be honest, I don't know. Maybe maybe there were some good stories about me crashing a car and. I really wish you had last names for your high school like bandmate, but um, and prom date, but like you know. I just thought of it. Dave and Shara. Yes. All right, then I feel good. Why about you just want to just want to like dox them? Is that what was, what was the point of that? No, I, just because well, you want to say the full name. Yeah, yeah, say yeah. the full name. Always sunny, like Nikki Potter. <clears throat> yeah, Tim Murphy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next week we have Sharon. As a special guest. Jesus Christ. I'm going to have to beat all the times to say their full names. Why? You know? I don't know. Maybe it's not cool to get discussed on the podcast. I don't know. Maybe not. Alright, I don't think we're saying anything wrong. Can you imagine when the space is one? Turn out all the faces into the sun. Raising our leaders.